and welcome to Cinema Clips. We are going to be continuing our journey through the series Camp Cretaceous. Now if you haven't seen the first episode, I advise you do, but I'm not forcing you. Anyway, let's get on with the review. Here we go! Episode 2 picks up where episode 1 left off where our main characters are in a bit of a sticky situation, to say the least. And it all looks like it's going to come to the worst until... Just kidding. Nope, it's actually the park rangers that have come to their rescue. They get pulled out just in time and a lot of other rangers or whatever they're called arrive and they all run past the camera to show the audience that they do do something and then this guy decides to make some interesting noises for them. I mean who knows what he's doing. Anyway, they're all in big trouble and I'm very surprised they didn't use the oh I thought this was the bathroom. We cut to the treehouse where this guy is clearly devastated at what he did. I do a lot of stupid things. But then suddenly Kenji has a bit of a change of character and he opens up that he does care about what people think about him. Which honestly is kinda good. We're making some progress over here. But on the other hand, it does make his character a bit more likable. But that doesn't take away from the fact that they're in big trouble. Now Kenji is good to get the brunt of it since he was the one that was in the cage. But suddenly Darius speaks up for him. Like good on you, Darius, but are you sure you want to do this to yourself? Especially for him. Trying to save me. Yeah, that's it. Guy. I was saving the poor, confused little kid. I'm sorry Darius, but you brought it on yourself. Anyway, a bit of back and forth later, they finally get less off the hook, but not before they become as enlisted volunteers to help Jurassic Park with some of its lower jobs. Meanwhile, everyone else gets to go on the exclusive tour to see Jurassic Park's genetic labs. Now of course Darius isn't too pleased about this. After all, this is a once in a lifetime experience, and he wants to sit next to this guy. But it turns out Kenji knows more about Jurassic Park than he lets on and offers, or persuades, Darius to come with him to see a dinosaur that has been stopped, has, that has stopped being shown to the public. Meanwhile, at the lab, everyone is having a very interesting time just casually being shown futuristic technology that we can only dream about today. They get shown the leader of the lab, aka the guy that made the dinosaurs, and he's not too pleased about having to be around dumb people. Dr. Wu, Camp Cretaceous? Miss Deering should have mentioned. I'm sorry, but Mr. Masrani has accelerated the timetable for our newest exhibit. And for some reason, this guy isn't that famous, even though he created dinosaurs, and gets easily persuaded when this girl said that she'll give him a shout out on her channel. How many people watch this web show of yours? Meanwhile, Kenji takes Darius down a sewer, or tunnel, whatever you want to call it, to go see this dinosaur. Like my boy Masrani always says, when Kenji promises, Kenji delivers. Huh? <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the lab, Dr. DNA starts his presentation about why he's simply the best scientist in the whole Jurassic Park. And while answering Mrs. Irritating's questions, he mentions that this particular room is restricted access. And as we all know, restricted access simply means you've got to find this out yourself. But their conversation is rudely interrupted when there's an unplanned hatching of one of the eggs. And I do love these robots' arms because what's even the point of it moving? Anyway, this egg hatches way before it was supposed to and casually rolls into this guy's arms. Thank goodness he put so much hand sanitizer on him. Um, do they expect me to start cooing like a dove? Back on Kenji and Darius' side, they sneak into this dinosaur's compound and also it seems a little clear that Kenji might have been stretching the truth a little bit. Meanwhile, Brooklander girl is about to casually break an entry when she gets jump scared by this girl. And as it turns out, they both seem to have the same intentions. Anyway, then they're both not going to admit it to each other. Please ought to come with the GPS. I really gotta go. Do you think that would even fool anyone? Anyway, the short and tall is that she breaks in, and I still don't know how this guy wouldn't have seen her. I mean, she would have been practically standing next to them. She gets in, looks around, sees some sus files, and gets caught. I 
thought the door said restroom? My question would be, is there anything more original you can use? We cut back to Kenji and Darius looking for this carnitol pen. I uh, just found out the name of the dinosaur right now. But Kenji has a bit of a slip up and we find out that what he said earlier back in the cabin was mostly a lie. What? Then what was all the- My whole life I've been trying to make my dad proud, Junior. I was lying. Because of the whole not wanting to get in trouble and send home thing. Wanting to spend another summer alone. In fact, when you really think about it, this is on you for being so gullible. Okay, I take back what I said earlier on. They have a bit of a fight and Darius wants to leave, but Kenji makes it clear that he wasn't lying about seeing the carpental. And Darius decides to join him anyway. They start walking and they eventually come to the fence. But then comes the question, which side are they on? But they soon find that out. Then there's a sudden jump cut to the cemetery. Nope, just kidding, we cut back to the lab, where everybody's cooing of this little dinosaur. And then suddenly, the this guy walks in and starts acting how I would in a situation like this. We'll soon be released into a herd of ankylosauruses. Then she'll be their problem. And most of them leave the lab all miserable for the little scaly menace. Then we cut to the real action, where Darius and Kenji are running away from the uh, carnosaur. Yes, that's right. And it is getting very close until Darius mentions there's a little trick about this one. Now they avoid it by using this whole quick turn thing, but something's gotta go wrong, right? And for a brief moment, it seems that Kenji has abandoned him. But the thought I was thinking is, how fast is this guy? He literally looks away for a second and he's like a mile off. He reappears in front of him with an extremely strong stick. And they just get away in the nick of time. And then they start swearing at him. Point! Ha! Yeah, boy! That's what's up! That's what's up! And of course this meathead doesn't like them doing that. But then they've got to get back before the others get back. Shortens all, they're like, hey, why are you pantsing like dogs? And then I, like, whoa, it was hard work. And Kenji wanted to spill the beans, but Darius is like, two near death experiences in two days? We can't tell anyone about Toro, or we're definitely getting sent home. They happily return back to the campsite, or sorry, camp tree, and then we get an end scene where Sun plugs a USB into a SARS drone. And that's where we end. Overall, I kind of liked episode 2. I think it was nice to see uh, Darius and Kenji get a bit of a small adventure together. Also, they give a bit of a hint in this one that there's something a little bit sus going on, especially the end scene where this guy plugs it into a drone. So, subscribe and don't miss episode 3. And cut!